This man's name is Drew. He is a great hacker who is always motivated to disrupt the system of the terrorists. He who calls himself Blackjack. He trying to hack into the system of a terrorist group in the Middle East who had disguised themselves as the organization of a news agency. In the middle of the action, Drew gets a call from one of his friends named Eric. He told Drew that the Blackjack position had been discovered by the police. Eric then tell Drew to immediately leave his place including destroying all computers that could be evidence of his actions. On the run, Drew was able to activate a nail mine through an AI called Ahab, causing one of the police cars that were chasing him to stop, including by hacking the brake system on another car, thereby reducing the number of cars chasing him. But unfortunately, the action doesn't apply to old cars that Ahab can't hack. Drew finally managed to be chased and arrested by the police. Now Drew is seen already at the headquarters of CIA Black Site located in Bulgaria. He was interrogated by Holden, who was a member of the CIA and claimed to have known Drew well since he was 14 years old. Not only that, Holden also reveals his past being Drew's boss when he used to work at a computer company called SOCOM. There was also an agent named Connolly who helped explain the current condition of Chicago which was experiencing a power outage and was thought to be a reaction from certain parties who had deliberately hacked the generator operating system to cause 200,000 electricity losses. He also mentioned about the risk of worse if the condition is not corrected in less than six hours. They were surprised because hackers use the Pantheon system which is known to be a high-tech system and must require an encryption key to be able to break into it. Although at first Drew refused to cooperate with the excuse that it was not an easy job, but in the end he did it anyway because of the prison threat he was accused of. In another place, a male hacker and his girlfriends named Bess and Jennifer are negotiating a price with a broker. The hacker was the culprit that caused the Chicago power outage and he wanted $10 million for the Pantheon program and the encryption key he created. Back to Drew, he is now getting a lot of praise because the electricity in Chicago, which was once out, is now back on. Everyone thought that it was the work of Drew, but instead he felt surprised and strange over all this incident. Because he admits he hasn't done anything. Even the access is locked by the Pantheon. Drew also suspects that the blackout is just a test by hackers to testing the greatness of the Pantheon he has created. Drew again explains that the Pantheon is a sophisticated system like implants that can be very dangerous and cause havoc if left unchecked, unless it is replaced by the encryption key itself. Finally Holden formed a special team led by Connolly and Drew who determined which members he would recruit. The first member named Fisher who is temperamental and skilled in blasting. The second member is named Gloria Miller. She's an expert in reconnaissance. And the last one was named Dimitri, who was a former KGB member and also Fisher's partner before. They were all armed with weapons and a car by Holden who without a long wait headed straight for the bar where the neo-Nazis congregated. The place is believed to be the coordinates of the figure who had locked Drew's access, though he couldn't find the encryption code for the Pantheon yet. Drew's goal is to be able to hack into the computers there to get the clues he needs. But unfortunately, when Connolly embed the chip in his target's laptop, he was caught and had to deal with the people at the bar. Things got even more chaotic when Fisher forced his way into the bar. But in the end he and Connolly managed to escape from there. On the other hand, the hacker who was the mastermind of the blackout in Chicago, now gets a call from the owner of the laptop in the bar. He explained everything that had just happened. Because of his carelessness, he was later killed by Jennifer. Thanks to the chip, now Drew has managed to get a clue with the disclosure of Tabs which is the name of the hacker who created the Pantheon. And now he's hunting for a broker who brokers the sale of the Pantheon, relying only on a Wi-Fi source in a city park which is always used by brokers in sending their emails. Finally Drew managed to find the figure of the broker he was looking for. But unfortunately, they actually lost the broker when the broker went to an underground station. Unexpectedly, it turns out that Tabs' girlfriend has been following Drew and his friends. On the other hand, Holden was shot by a mysterious person who injured his arm. At the same time, it turns out that there is a general named Constantine who gets a call about a missed shot aimed at Holden. Connolly along with other police units are raiding a location believed to be a broker's hideout. Through the signal, they all headed to the location according to Drew's directions. Unfortunately, the source of the signal all this time has come from a donkey that turns out to be carrying a basket containing a broker's corpse. The situation gets even more chaotic when Connolly and his partner get an attack from a mysterious sniper who overthrows several members there including Connolly who is surprised by Jennifer's appearance. It turns out that Jennifer is a former co-worker of Connolly. She unhesitatingly finished off Connolly. On the other hand, Tabs was seen having a serious conversation with Constantine. Constantine turns out to have a personal grudge with Moscow and Tabs can become an intermediary to vent his revenge. When the discussion about the price of the Pantheon has not been agreed, suddenly Jennifer arrives and Tabs asks her to kill Constantine. But surprisingly, Jennifer turned out to have worked with Constantine only because he was paid twice as much as Tabs paid. Meanwhile the Pentagon is sending complete data on Holden's target. There appears the original data from Jennifer named Bettina who became a spy as well as a very valuable Russian asset. She's also reported to 
have worked for a general named Constantine who is known to have left Russia during the fall of the Berlin Wall. He's also now known to be the leader of a third of the armed forces in Bulgaria. From all these data it can be concluded that Constantine has the potential to trigger the Third World War if he manages to get the encryption key from the Pantheon. Not long after that, suddenly all the electricity in Bulgaria went out. The action is one of the actions of Tabs which is now under Constantine's control. Aware of the increasingly dire situation, Drew contacts Eric again to find out any leads on Tabs. Until then, Eric got an interesting fact about the e-cigarette that Tabs has always used. Drew believes that the e-cigarette products used by Tabs are made in China and have a backdoor embedded in them, and it can be a loophole to be able to find out the location of Tabs. After getting the coordinates that are believed to be the location of Tabs, Drew and his partner are now heading to that place. It is the site of a power plant in Bulgaria, despite being heavily guarded by many armed forces. But amazingly, Gloria is able to show her prowess in using weapons. Gloria managed to overthrow two guards in just one shot. Slowly everything managed to slip in. Until Drew walks into one of the generator rooms and finds a computer that gives him access to hack into the system. It was later discovered that Tabs after setting the Pantheon by changing the direction of the gas line towards the city which could trigger a huge explosion in the city. At the same time, Tabs immediately realized that an intruder had entered the mainframe of the system. But it also made Constantine immediately check all the places there to ensure the truth. Meanwhile, Fisher and Dimitri, who were wearing army uniforms, were surprised by several other guards who had actually prepared a birthday party for their partner. But they were surprised to be greeted by Fisher and Dimitri. And there was a shot that killed all the guards in that room. But unfortunately, one of the guards came and found out what Fisher and Dimitri were doing. He then ran off and set off the alarm. Hearing the sound of alarm, all the guards immediately moved to look for the intruder who entered and including the guard who was watching Tabs. Tabs noticed that there were no guards watching him, then decided to leave with bring the Pantheon encryption key. Meanwhile elsewhere, it was Gloria and Drew who had been attacked by two guards, now instead met with Tabs who was trying to escape. Drew initially wanted to persuade Tabs to give up the encryption key he was holding, but Tabs instead tries to attack him and Drew accidentally shoots Tabs in the arm making him run away and the encryption key then falls and breaks. Drew is clueless about analog systems, finally helped by Gloria to be able to restore the gas line system to its original state by making a network through cables in that place. But in the middle of it, Fisher contacted him to inform the whereabouts of Bettina who he thought could be a hindrance to him. Gloria felt challenged and immediately went to Bettina to invite her to fight. Meanwhile, Dimitri, who had previously fled, now reappears and helps Fisher in dealing with General Constantine. Finally the cooperation of the two ridiculous men paid off. Fisher successfully detonated the tank driven by Constantine. While Gloria finally managed to defeat Bettina. On the other hand, Drew manages to fix the gas line system just seconds before the big explosion hits the city. The success was then celebrated by eating a birthday cake found by Fisher and Dimitri. One month later, Drew and his partner are now appointed CIA's official agents and will start their new mission again. And the movie ends.